Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, Blake Lovell and Gilmer of Eastern 14 here to give our bold predictions for SEC football. We get to the Missouri Tigers today. I'll start with bold predictions, guys. Missouri's defense under Blake Baker made a big jump a year ago. Got so much better after just being awful in 2021. I like Missouri's supporting cast. That's been well-documented. Really love their secondary. I'm going to say the Tigers take another jump this year. This is hard to do in college football these days, but between what Missouri's got returning and a few plays being shaved off games, it helps too. I'm going to say Missouri allows under 20 points a game this season. Again, hard to do, bold prediction, but I believe in what they're doing in Columbia on that side of the ball. Blake, your turn. I'm going to go to Blaine because I know Blaine's going to go the other side of the ball, and I think it's a good transition into what they could do on that side and one person in particular that could. Um, and then I'll tie it all up in the end because if you're both right, uh, perhaps it could lead to to my bold prediction. So Yeah, I'm going to try to go bold. And listen, these are bold predictions. We are trying to push the envelope here, okay? But I do think this is a in the realm of possibility. This is not total fiction that this could happen. I think when you're looking at this attack, I think you could possibly see a couple different quarterbacks play. That's not my bold prediction, but I don't know that it's going to be settled right away and things like that. And I don't know that with that, there's going to be a great rapport just with one guy receiving. And sometimes it takes a guy who's crafty, who's been around and been around some winning football to come in. And sometimes a new change of scenery is really good. Theo Wees was a highly coveted recruit when he came in to Oklahoma. I think this, young man is going to see a resurgence in his career. And I'm going to predict that he actually leads this team in receiving not Luther Burden because I think so much attention is going to be on Luther Burden that I think Theo Wees ends up having a really big year in Columbia, Blake. All right. So as I'm glad Blaine said it and I didn't have to. We are really trying here to come up with these bold predictions, and sometimes they're easier than others. Um I don't know about this one, but I think it's about as close as I'm going to find to a bold prediction. And I think there will be a lot of people who say this is crazy and impossible. But when you really look at it, it's not. Because I think if Missouri's defense is as good as we think it can be, and we've all talked about that this offseason, if the offense can just find that extra something, maybe that is bringing in a new receiver, like Blaine said, that can help kind of jumpstart things along with Luther Burden there, figure out some consistency at quarterback, maybe. Just maybe this is the turning point that the Missouri Tigers need this season going beyond getting uh, a number one recruit in the country, which you can find here on Southeastern 14, courtesy of Blaine Gilmer. Um, You can find uh, all of that. But my bold prediction for the Missouri Tigers, who are not coached by Dennis Gaze, they're coached by Eli Drinkwitz. And it is going to be that Missouri starts the season 5-0 and heading into a showdown with what is going to be a primetime classic against the LSU Tigers on October the 7th. We've said it's one of those things where when you're playing in Columbia, Missouri, it gets weird, weird, baby. It gets weird. weird We saw it in the Georgia game last year. Chris, I'm going to officially anoint the Kansas state game as that game this season, early in the season. Um, If you look at and kind of studying Kansas state a little bit, that's a team that still has Will Howard at quarterback, but keep in mind, they're replacing a stud running back in Deuce Vaughn. They got to replace some top wide receivers. And if you're going up against this Missouri defense that we all think is going to be really, really good, I don't hate that spot for game three of the season. It's an early kickoff. It's a 12 Eastern kickoff there. Um, so South Dakota, Middle Tennessee, Kansas State, all at home. They got Memphis and St. Louis. At Vanderbilt on September the 30th, there are a couple of potential pitfalls in there, maybe multiple, when you look at the schedule. But uh, I'm going to go all in on the Tigers here with my bold prediction uh, because this would be quite bold if they're 5-0. Chris, we've said, and and we've said plenty of times on here, when games are at LSU, we talk about the liquored-up Cajuns, right? (laughs) LUC and instead of LSU. Well, I can tell you that if that scenario comes to fruition, if Blake – gets it right and they are five and oh with the tigers coming into town you're gonna see some liquored up colombians not liquored up cajuns because it is going to be raucous in there and i guarantee you that como is going to be somewhere that nobody wants to be if they've got that uh what is it 2013 2014 momentum on their side right there 
a uh, little little magic trying to drink, trying to throw it back a little bit. I was going to say, it may be the same scenario too, uh, guys, if they are two and three heading into that game, because then it's LSU, they're at Kentucky, South Carolina, they still got to go to Georgia, Tennessee. So Missouri fans may be doing that uh, for a different reason if they wind up losing three of those first five games, which again is possible when you consider the opponent. So. Blake, if, if they're two and three headed into week six, Ooh. is is Dennis Gates wow. coaching football too? I don't know. There's going to be some unhappy Missouri fans if they're two and three heading into that LSU game. But again, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's spreads out there that will – maybe I'll ask Brian Edwards this about, you know, what the spread would be for the Kansas State game. I mean, Missouri would, was going to be the underdog, I would think, in that game uh, to start off with because Kansas State's a top-20 team probably. The Memphis game's interesting at Vanderbilt. I don't think that's a, you know, you can tell me, Chris. I mean, I, I think that's a pretty close line probably just yeah. based on where these two teams are. So, I mean, Missouri potentially is even an underdog depending what's happened, you know, those first four weeks. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, again, we're, we're looking and trying to find stuff here. That's the best I could come up with. So, um, if Kansas State rolls uh, Missouri, hey, uh, I get it, but I, I don't, I just don't hate the way it sets up. But again, this is all going to depend on the defense and really if that offense can take a step forward. So, yeah, maybe not a good omen in week. Last time a Missouri coach was undefeated heading to Nashville. Mm. That was Barry Odom circa 2019. Yeah. And Vanderbilt won its only conference game that year. In fact, the only game it would win until it beat Kentucky last year. So that that's been a weird game too, if we're going to bring hey, into it. So can't overlook MTSU either in week that, two. That I'm also, saying, right. Like there's it, it's not this is bold for a reason. I, I think it's gonna be tough, but let's go with it. Well, I, I'm a believer in this team. I'm looking forward to seeding them in Nashville. Looking forward to doing the rest of our bold predictions. Best way to get those, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button that helps our analytics. For Blake Level and Blaine Gilmer, I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon with more SEC football content.